Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, same thing, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There is a great video that I've come across, and I've placed it in my favorites folder here on my YouTube channel page. It's called Janady Golovkin, The Lost Art of Shifting. Right, I would encourage you to Google it. The video should pop right up. The uh, poster is someone called Rushalka Afterglow, right? The video is noteworthy because it talks about shifting, which is the uh, approach guys use to land punches in the late 19th century and early part of the 20th century, right? Um, it's where guys are setting up situations where they can shift their weight and have maximum leverage on the way in to throw punches. And the video is so good it actually names famous shifters in boxing history, right? Bob Fitzsimmons, Stanley Ketchum, Jack Dempsey. It even has clips of Roberto Duran shifting his weight right to land big time punches and it talks about how Janady Golovkin does that to land home run bombs right to close fights what Golovkin will often do is he'll set it up where he tries to get you to walk into punches by let's say acting like he's throwing a couple of jabs then as you lean away from the jab you've fallen into the trap because then Golovkin will shift his weight over, right? You know, he's throwing a jab, he's shifting his weight over, hoping to get maximum leverage on a right hand that you're walking into, right? There's a reason why, in my opinion, the focus on shifting isn't as great as it was a hundred years ago. And that's because a skillful fighter can beat shifting through movement. In other words, a Muhammad Ali wasn't sticking around long enough for you to go through your routine where you're throwing fake punches, then you're leaning your weight here, you're leaning your weight there, and you're coming inside, right? The problem with it is what happens if someone fights Golovkin? And as Golovkin comes in with his pawing attack, the person just moves away. Right? If the person figures out, too, that Golovkin is trying to get him or her to lean away from the jab, right? Lean toward Golovkin's other hand, a skillful boxer will always figure out to go outside of the jab, right? Great footwork is on positioning. You don't want to be in front of the other fighter. You only want to be there long enough to land your own shots. Right? The other problem with shifting is it really requires the whole ring. In other words, Golovkin needs room to operate. Right? He's, he's shifting so he can walk forward and gain leverage. What happens if he faces an opponent who forces him onto his back foot? Let's say Golovkin Andre Ward. Let's say Andre Ward isn't there to just watch this guy shift and then land a big punch. Let's say Andre Ward makes sure that the distance between him and Golovkin isn't that great. Right? Just like Ward did, by the way, against Mikhail Kessler. You remember the accusation was that Ward was headbutting Mikhail Kessler. Just like Ward did against Alan Green. Right? What happens if Ward gets inside of Golovkin's comfort zone and doesn't give him the opportunity to take huge steps and shift his weight? Right? And so the concept is great, and I'll agree. Golovkin is great at loading up with, you know, high leverage power shots. Right? If you scout the internet, you're even going to see an interview with former light heavyweight champion Tavares Cloud who 
used to be trained by Abel Sanchez, who is Golovkin's trainer, and Cloud, who sparred with Golovkin, talks about how Golovkin hits like a light heavyweight. Right? There's another interview here online, Abel Sanchez, who used to train Sergei Kovalev, talking about sparring sessions between Golovkin and Kovalev, where Kovalev was reluctant to engage. Right? No doubt, Golovkin is a huge puncher. My point to you is simply, a lot of the sport is decided before the punches are thrown. Shifting requires an opponent who's going to watch you take steps and shift weight and is going to go certain ways when you throw punches. These days, we all have access to videotapes. Don't you think a Andre Ward or a Bernard Hopkins, a Floyd Mayweather, wouldn't look at the tapes of Golovkin and wouldn't see the tactics Golovkin uses to shift his weight and then to be flat-footed and throw heavy shots? And isn't the problem with setting up these flat-footed heavy shots the idea that you might be playing a chess player who wants you to throw the heavy flat-footed shot because if that punch is defensed, you're wide open for a counter. In the video I've mentioned, which is in my favorites, right, the Janady Golovkin, The Lost Art of Shifting video, you're going to notice they have a clip from Golovkin against Proxa. And you're going to notice Golovkin throws a huge right hand and Proxa ducks under it. Now the video is about how Golovkin frames that right hand, how he sets it up so he has Proxa leaning into it. But the point is, Proxa ducks under it. An opponent actually can have time to see the big punches coming. That's the problem. Right? That creates an opening for the Ali's of the world. Right? Guys who can move, who can operate off their back foot, the Ray Robinsons, right, who literally are just there watching your movement and moving away before you can get flat-footed, or watching your movement, bracing themselves for your big punch, rolling with the punch, and then countering you. That's the question with Golovkin, not whether he has a big punch, not whether he's a great shifter, not whether he knows how to shift his weight so he gets maximum leverage. The question is, what happens when he fights a guy who can move out the way? What happens when he fights a guy who can get up on him, force him on his back foot, or not give him room to shift? Right? The video talks about Roberto Duran as one of the great shifters in history. I encourage you to look at the second Duran Ray Leonard fight. Wasn't the problem that Duran had in that fight the fact that Ray Leonard is moving around the ring? It gets so ridiculous, Ray Leonard starts clowning him in the fight, waving one hand, throwing the other, and stuff like that. Right? Because Ray Leonard understood from the first fight that if he stood toe to toe with Duran, he was going to have problems. But if he moved a bit around the ring, right, Duran wouldn't be able to set up his big-time liver shots. If he stayed away from Duran, he wouldn't have to worry about Duran's inside game. Right? That's the problem. Okay? As I like to say, boxing's rock, paper, scissors. No one's unbeatable. So, I encourage everyone to go to the Favorites folder on my YouTube channel page and look at a great video. Janady Golovkin, The Lost Art of Shifting. Just to understand, a hundred years ago, people stood in front of you and fought. Right? These days, you have a lot of guys who are moving around the ring behind a jab. Right? Nobody's standing there to watch you shift.
Not only that, if they know you're a great shifter who's throwing imaginary punches to set up flat-footed home run balls, they're just going to move away from your imaginary punches because they'll know that's the start of a process. Right? They're going to keep you readjusting in the ring, aren't they? Let me hear from you. Uh, let me say this too. With regard to Miguel Cotto, a possible Golovkin opponent, there's a great video online. It's Danny Garcia's father, Angel Garcia. Right? I love Angel Garcia videos because this guy knows boxing. And he noticed <coughs> that Golovkin got hit with a lot of jabs. Right? In a recent fight. He noticed it. So he's talking about how, you know, what Cotto would have to do is come in, throw jabs, look for the big punch, right? And then tie up Golovkin, come inside, right? Just understand, people looking at Phil see the opportunity for Golovkin opponents to come inside, especially when... They have more foot speed than Golovkin, which is what Cotto has. Keep in mind, too, Cotto wouldn't be in there watching the action. Cotto himself is a devastating puncher, right? He just knocked a middleweight champion, Sergio Martinez, down several times in a fight, right? And Cotto would be throwing devastating left hands to the body. In other words, this isn't all about Gennady Golovkin being defensed. This would also be about Golovkin worried himself about getting hurt. Right? So as I like to say, there's no Superman in boxing. Right? Golovkin's style looks great against certain styles. But as you look at the film, just understand there are other styles that could give him a problem. And be honest with yourself. What big name fighters has he fought? Let me hear from you. Golovkin is a skillful shifter of his weight. No question about it. It is a lost art. I'm just wondering whether that art is as relevant today as it was in Jack Dempsey's day. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me say this. One of boxing's more interesting historical figures is former middleweight champion Stanley Ketchell, who was a master at shifting. I believe they mentioned him in this video. Understand, Stanley Ketchell famously knocked down heavyweight champion Jack Johnson in an exhibition. Right? That would be like Gennady Golovkin catching Vladimir Klitschko and knocking him down. Right? Sadly, Stanley Ketchell got murdered at a young age, but there are many who believe that he's one of the best middleweights who ever lived. I would encourage everyone to look at Stanley Kitchell videos, how he shifted his weight, how he was the tremendous puncher that he was. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.